Well, a great uh, start to the debate. Uh, Paul, you're next, and uh, I'll be lenient in the time to take an account of, uh, of Hernando's mild excesses there. Thank you. If I speak and sit down after one minute, was that deducted from Dabiza's time? <laughs> <laughs> we can talk. <laughs> um, I, I, I wrote the bottom billion because I, the bottom billion was meant to describe about 60 low-income countries that had missed out on global prosperity. They'd stagnated when everybody else had prospered, and as a result, they diverged. They diverged for 40 years, and it seems to me a vital matter, both for the billion people living in these societies and for the rest of mankind, that instead of diverging, they start to catch up. That's the challenge. However it's done, it seems to me fundamental that the bottom billion converge with the rest of mankind. If the next 40 years is like the last 40 years, we're heading for tragedy. So what can we do, we in the, the rich world? Um, I think there are four policy areas that are, that are important in getting convergence. One is security. You're actually doing that in Afghanistan. One is trade policy, which Dambiza emphasizes. One is governance. And the fourth is aid. Aid is part of that spectrum of effective policies. Why aid? Because the, the fundamental reality of the bottom billion is that these countries are desperately short of capital. That's their defining feature. It's not their only feature, but it's a defining feature. They've got to accumulate capital, and if they have to do that just from internal resources, they'll have to cut consumption deeply. And they're already living at the margin of subsistence. So they need international capital, um, not just aid, both public capital and private capital. Potentially, they're complements. The public capital provides things like the roads. The private capital pays for things like the trucks. Now, in Africa to date, there's been a lot of criticism of public capital, of aid. But the reality is that private international capital has also failed. Um, let's take a couple of examples. The big program of private lending to African governments, to my mind, the, the, the stellar example, the big example, is Nigeria. Nigeria, in the late 1970s, early 80s, was able to borrow quite heavily on international capital markets. The international banks that provided that money didn't care to ask who was borrowing it, how was it going to be used. It went down the drain. It just left Nigeria with a load of international private indebtedness. The big example of foreign direct investment to Africa over the last decade has been to Angola. Angola. Right? Is the government of Angola aligned with its citizens? No. Right? So, even, in fact, even in the boom years, the last crazy five years when private capital would go almost anywhere, it was almost anywhere except the bottom billion. Right? They were just starting at the margins when the whole thing collapsed. Looking forward, don't hold your breath. Right? So, um, aid, what, why did private capital fail to develop Africa? Was it the fault of aid? Well, of course not. Right? Aid's not that important. Right? AIDS, one of a range of policies, it's a marginal benefit, but the idea that it was responsible for the failure of private capital, I think is untenable. There are much deeper problems. For example, there was the resource curse across much of Africa. The, there was the political paradox that the societies were, were too large to be a nation, because they were, the politicians hadn't forged a common sense of identity, 
And yet they were too small to be viable states. They couldn't reap the scale economies inherent in public capital, in, in public goods. And often the, the opportunities were quite limited. Some of the countries were landlocked. Once China had got into global industrial markets, it was very hard to compete against China. Um, I wrote the bottom billion to try and create a center ground between what I regard as theatrically polarized opposing positions. Without a, 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 a center ground, we cannot get intelligent public policies. Aid can't fix all these problems. The core struggles are internal. In all these societies, there are brave people struggling for change. But we can make aid more effective than it's been. Aid's been through a learning process. Until the fall of the Soviet Union, aid was given for a completely non-developmental agenda. And so we've been about 16 years into learning. And there's been some big mistakes. But they're mistakes which can be rectified. We can condition aid not on the policies that governments adopt. We shouldn't be telling governments what policies to adopt, but we can condition aid on the governance of those governments. That is to say we should be conditioning aid to require governments to be accountable to their own citizens. And finally, we can use aid much more strategically linked up with those other policies, security and trade and governance. Let me close with an example which is Canada now. Um, and it concerns Canada's second biggest uh, aid recipient, which is Haiti. Now, Haiti is a classic country of the bottom billion. The difficult thing in Haiti, which is the provision of security, has been done not by Canada, but by the Brazilians. There are 12,000 peacekeeping troops there. And then the next difficult thing was trade. And the US has done that. It's created a special trade deal, privileged market access for Haiti. Those are the hard things. And now what's needed is aid to be targeted on providing the infrastructure that would enable Haiti to benefit from those opportunities. It's, the ball is in Canada's court. That's an example of aid which could be harnessed to generating the jobs that Haiti so badly needs. Paul, then, gonna... finally, the private investors will come in. Private capital can be the solution, but it's going to be built on public capital having got it right first. Thank you. I just want to thank Paul as a uh, regular professor, he said before this debate, I speak in 50-minute increments, so this is a challenge, so thank you, Paul, for that.